listening to all the speaker this morning, technology seems an in real trend. And every day, it seems like I hear a lot about automation, online, digital, and it's really become a business term. And these business terms are threatening on traditional business market. Imagine Amazon scaring on the supermarket store. And imagine Rob Uber entering Vietnam really scaring on traditional taxi company. And there are more online learning platform, digital marketing campaigns, Skype, telepresent, and more to come, which create more titan to own traditional marketplace. So it sounds very scary. Then James or wait, like he just mentioned, take action and experiment or wait. So do you really want to follow the trend or do you want to wait until something hits your business? Reinvent HR or technology? Which one do you want? So these are really everyday questions from all leader and CEO, HR leader in almost every company in the whole world currently. So therefore, I have our four speakers today, four uh, special guests today, who will help us to understand further on what is it inside, whether we want to wait or whether we want to change now. So let me uh, first introduce Huyen Tran. Um, Huyen Tran currently is the head of, um, heads of uh, client relation management from Watson Tower, Tower Watson. And An Thang currently is vice president uh, from uh, Global Cybersoft. And Mr. Eun Ji Soon, currently the uh, regional general manager from Rap for Work. And uh, Rick, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce your name properly. Vanovic, founder and CEO of uh, T, uh, TRG International. Let's give them a big welcoming hand to our special guest today. And last but not least, my name is Yuen. I am e, uh, EII Hesha Hesha from BAT. So let's start from uh, An Thang first. Um, you know, um, it's really an enriched trend in te technology. And we, I would also wonder on what's it in enriched trend in using technology in Vietnam. So let, let's come back to An Thang. An Thang, can you share with, with us on how long have been uh, global cyber sub operating in Vietnam so far? So good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today uh, to um, in this event and have a chance to talk with um, all of you. And uh, first of all, I'd like to share a, a little bit of experience about the, um, our company uh, presence in Vietnam and what we have been doing so far. So we've been in um, uh, the business in um, providing the IT solutions and services in Vietnam since uh, 2000. And, um, uh, we, uh, we have a strong focus on the solutions for enterprises, including ERP, and um, also very strong focus on the HCM solution, HIS, uh, so-called. And um, we um, have had um, mm, chances to work with uh, um, many organizations in Vietnam, from the local companies to the uh, MNC corporations who have uh, operations in Vietnam. And we have seen um, um, the um, significant trend in uh, investing uh, more and more in the um, HIS uh, solutions, uh, more on the uh, technology to uh, enable the HIS transformation. So from uh, our perspective, we um, think that uh, the HIS um, uh, cannot be uh, standalone in uh, the sense of um, business side only, but uh, it has to be the uh, 
the transformation of HR um, and now enabled by the technology. So that's uh, the uh, focus that we um, really want to bring to the clients, uh, our customers and the enterprises, the business side of the um, consulting and advisory plus the um, technology tools that uh, can um, enable the faster transformation to help the enterprise to be more agile, more flexible and um, to uh, step up to the higher level from automation to uh, transformation or HR. Thank you, Anh Thang. It seems like uh, cyber, uh, Lobo CyberShop focuses more on HR solution and also automation. So I would also keen to understand from you, from your observation, which industry are using technology most in Vietnam? I, I, I believe our audience also keen to understand that. Um, I think uh, the scope of your question is a little bit uh, broad about the adoption of technology in general. Of course, I, th I think that in via from, from Vietnam, uh, traditionally the, uh, the manufacturing industry has been adopting technology the most, I think so. Uh, but um, uh, lately, the um, service industry and the banking and uh, financial service sector is also growing up and uh, a lot of more and more technologies has been uh, applied and uh, also to help the um, enterprises with the, uh, their core business transactions as well as the uh, internal business management and also the HIS area as well. Thank you, Anh Thang. It seems like manufacturing, services industry, and banking are the most commonly using technology. So if you are not known those company, let's think whether you want to change or you wait. Okay, let's come to, uh, let's check out with Chi, uh, Chi, should I call you by Chi? Chi Sun. Chi Sun, yeah. Um, on perhaps a successful story in connecting traveling demand and supply with your online platform. So can you share with us more on, uh, first, how long have been Grab operating into Vietnam? And uh, share with us a little bit further on your business initiative. Yeah. Well, I think I look around the panel here, looks like we are probably the youngest company here. Uh, just a quick background, uh, Grab, um, you know, our, our business started only about five years ago. We recently celebrated our fifth uh, anniversary and in Vietnam, uh, I don't remember exactly when we started, but it's no more than three or four years ago. Um, and um, we've, we've been, you know, been, been quite fortunate that we've been able to scale our business tremendously. Um, I just want to reflect on a couple of points that an earlier speaker also spoke about uh, with the disruption of workforce and he gave the example um, of uh, independent contractors, if you may, and, and gave the example of Grab and he's absolutely right because, you know, while we've scaled internally uh, as an organization to about 3,000 employees across the region, across, a, across the globe, um, but in reality, our independent driver partners, numbers, 1.2 million. So you look at the ratio, right? You know, our full-time employees is just a drop uh, in the bucket. And I, I believe, you know, maybe Grab, it's a, you, you, you will think that it's a, a unique case, uh, but I do believe that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really evolving there really rapidly. And if, if, you, if, you, if you, you know, look around at the different industries, I think different segments of the industries move uh, a little bit uh, diff at different paces. And I think some industries are already adopting that uh, in a very big scale. And uh, the other point you also mentioned about, um, uh, you know, disruption. So uh, it's interesting that as a company, you know, we have our own set of mantras or values internally. And, and one of them really it's about, you know, to disrupt or be disrupted. So, and, and that's how we propel our innovation internally as well. Uh, even in HR, right? I mean, uh, you know, within the HR community, um, you know, we are exploring the, the, uh, the, the periphery of technology, how we can, you know, really use technology uh, to bring about the different, different automation, different processes uh, in, in HR as well. Um, and the final point I want, to, I want to mention in terms of business is that uh, I also saw in the previous speaker's slide that there's a huge lag between technology advancement and the improvement in productivity. And in fact, for Grab, 
enterprise, Grab for Work, which I represent. And that's, the gap is really huge. Uh, I find it not just in Vietnam, but across the region as well. So while the technology for expense management automation is already available, and we provide such a solution, um, but many companies still live in the Stone Age when it comes to expense management. You know, many companies we speak to, we ask them, how do you manage your, your taxi claims, for example, right? And they'll tell us, oh, our employees will keep receipts from taxis and then accumulate them for a month, and then at the end of the month, they will paste them on photocopy paper uh, and then submit it. And it goes almost to a black hole because it goes through many hands along the way um, and touches many people's uh, uh, hands. And then in the end, it takes up a lot of time. In our own research, an average employee maybe submit a claim once or twice a month. And each time, it takes up to an hour. That's two whole hours of wasted productivity. And not to mention that after you hand it over, you know, there's a lot of administrative process. The HR people are involved, the finance people are involved, the hiring managers are involved, and all these are taking up a lot of, uh, a lot of productivity. And that accounts for the gap between technology and business adoption, I think. That's one of, one of the huge areas, I believe. Yeah. Thank you, Chi Soon. Disrupt or be disrupt? Wow. And you know, uh, uh, a robust thinking, advancing thinking from RAP really challenging us on whether you want to use technology or keep your manual processes. So think about that. So uh, a very nice story from Grab, and I would also like to understand a little bit further on what really made Grab business model a successful one. Can you share with us a little bit further? Can you, can you say that again? What made Grab business model become a successful one? I, I think... Um, I think it starts with a, a very clear idea of the problem we are trying to solve, right? And, and it goes back to the history, right? This company uh, was born uh, in a very humble way in Malaysia, where the taxi industry was um, not very efficient. There's a lot of uh, haggling with prices, in terms of prices between a taxi driver and a passenger. There's also the concern about safety, uh, so one of our co-founders, she was a young lady, you know, each time she, when she took taxis, she would have to, you know, keep her parent informed about where, her whereabouts and her parents would be praying until she gets home, right? So there was a very clear problem uh, that a company wanted to solve. And we felt that with technology, you could solve that. So I think this is a generic statement and that's, that's what, how we drive our company internally. You ask the question about how we are successful. I think we are single-minded about solving a problem. And of course, if you, if you extend that into a process, it is a whole series of problems that we are trying to solve, right? So it's an iteration. So, so first we solve the, uh, the safety issues, right? And then um, and we iterate from there. We discover through talking to drivers, through talking to passengers, there are these pain points that they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we really try and define again that problem, define it ex ex excruciatingly uh, um, uh, clearly, and then go about solving that problem. And that's what we've been doing for the last five years. And I suspect we'll continue to be doing that in the next five years or more. Wow, it seems like problem is excellent. Problem is reason for all of us to be here, right? Someone need enough to solve problem. That's why we are here. That's why we are high to come for a certain company. So therefore, don't look at a problem as a problem, scaring a problem, but look at the problem as a business opportunity like crap. And we HR people should also look into the problem as a chance for us to find what should be the solution and what kind of technology can we use to solve that problem rather than we ourselves running like hell every day to solve every problem with repeating tasks. Thank you, Jisun, for very insight and very inspiring story from Rob. So now, let me move to um, Rich. Let's talk to Rich. Um, um, available uh, and understand from him a little bit further about available technology uh, currently. So Rich, how, how long have TRG been operating in Vietnam? Mm, about 
23 years. 23 years. Wow, that's quite a long time. And Rich, I saw one of the TRG statement, and it say, you should not work for system. System should work for you. And it's real, it really sounds inspiring. And I would imagine if I adopting a good system or technology in the company, I would be able to release on the administration work and it will leave me time to focus more on core business. So uh, can you share with us what are the available technology solutions that we can consider to adopt in enhancing work productivity? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> um, we could be here all day. Uh, as a previous speaker already uh, pointed out, there are so many things that, that we could automate. But let me focus on maybe what's available right now here in Vietnam, rather than something that isn't available here yet and we want. Picking up on um, Chi Soon's point on, and, and your point, looking for problems and, and, and solving them. I guess we look at things slightly differently. Um, uh, one of our, our core values is not to look for the problems, but we, one of our core values is Kaizen. And our, our application of Kaizen is in, is in two directions. Kaizen we interpret as lifelong learning, or how do I build a better me? So how do each of us improve ourselves every day? And we seek to enable people to be able to do that, because don't we want everybody to be as successful and as good as they could possibly be? Okay, so that's one aspect. The other aspect is nothing is ever perfect. And there must be a better way of doing whatever we're doing in a better way. So we can say that's solving a problem or whatever or innovating, but it really doesn't matter how small a thing, but there must be a better way of doing things. So again, picking up from our previous speaker again, it's as business leaders, and you don't even have to be a business leader, as just normal people in our organizations who want to help our organizations, we need to take action. No matter how small it is, we need to start. You know, as, as the proverb goes, you know, a journey of a million miles, you know, takes, we have to take that first step. So just start. And you've all taken that step today because you're here. You're here to learn. So what's, what's available on HR tech? Hmm. Let's look at some simple ones. How about an ATS, an applicant tracking system? All right. So a lot of us in this room are involved in HR, and we are hopefully recruiting some people. Who uses a fully automated system for that? Anyone? A few. Just a few. Okay, but they're available in Vietnam right today. What do we mean by an ATS? So rather than having your job advert, uh, say, on your website and somebody emailing your HR department or your careers person and they being flooded with a gazillion emails every week that they have to sift through, why isn't that handled by a system who automatically sifts through it for you? Okay? and alerts you when people meet the criteria. You can deploy a few bots to help with that, to sort them out into the right job, into the right department, to have the workflow go to the right hiring manager, and have all your workflow steps to take it from applicant all the way through to the multiple interviews and scheduling. That's available now in Vietnam. It's been available for years. Okay? Um, we've tried selling it. It's incredible how poor the uptake is. I don't know if people are scared that it's going to replace and reduce headcount of your recruiters, but it is pretty boring paperwork if you actually had to do that job. So that's a very, very simple thing. 
How about another thing? Um, I think in previous um, presentations this morning, and anybody who's reading anything on, on the press around HR is always talking about the difficulty we are all faced with in hiring the right people. We're saying we can't find the right people. Talent is scarce. But on the other hand, why are there so many people unemployed? You know? um, now, I don't proclaim to be an HR specialist. I'm more on the technology side. Or truth be told, I'm actually a bean counter by training. Um, so I've always thought that there must be a technological way to solving this recruitment problem. There has to be. Okay? So in modern terminology, people start talking about people science, big data. How, you know, we've, we, I, I hope we've all read that report from Google who analyzed the millions and millions of applicants that they've had, and, and we've all known that those really difficult, crazy questions that Google used to ask their applicants, like how many tennis balls can we put in a 747, or something ridiculous like that, okay? And Google have turned around and said, it's completely wrong. We should not be asking these silly questions just to make ourselves as the recruiters feel smart or something, or you, the candidate, feel not so smart. So what is really, where's the science from all this data that they've got? Is there anything that can actually help us select the right people? And it's really quite simple. We need to select the right person for the right job. I know that sounds really stupid. <laughs> okay, how many people in this room have kids? Come and put your hand up. All right. Um, remember when they were really little, the babies? One of the toys that we may or may not have bought them, I know I, I bought my kids them, is, you know, little pegs, square ones, round ones, triangle ones, and they need to put it in a hole. You know, square peg goes into square hole. Round peg goes into round hole. So where does all this people, what's this got to do with people science and kiddies building block things? Well, it's quite simple. Every single one of us on the planet, we're all pegs. But we're all different shapes, aren't we? Some of them a bit more round than others, some a bit taller or whatever. But, you know, that, that's size. But when we look at what makes us tick, how we behave, what turns us on, what turns us off, how sociable am I? Am I extrovert? Am I introvert? Am I trustworthy? Am I not trustworthy? Am I humble? Am I not humble? Am I manageable? Am I not manageable? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of behaviors or characteristics that as HR people, we know about those things, okay? And all of us, we have them all to different shapes and sizes. We're all pegs. Now, when we look at our jobs that we're trying to fill, I'm going to call them holes. So if you have a team of five, uh, a team of ten people, all right, in any role, you're probably going to find that you've got one or two superstars, the A team. Unfortunately, they're one or two people that you really, really regret that you ever, ever hired them or put them in that team. So we have a few mistakes, and the rest are so-so. They're great, okay? But when we want to hire people into that team, who do we want to hire? The A team, the ones that we should never have hired, or the people in the middle? It's one of three, right? We usually want to hire more of the A team and less of the ones that we have made a little bit of a mistake about. All right? So what if this people science could find out the shape of your A team, the hole? Then it's just a matter of put the peg in the hole. Okay? I call that people science. Other people with older terminology and a lot older than me would call that psychometrics. Other people call it assessments or testing, all the same thing. Is that available in Vietnam today? Yes, it is. It's been there for years. Do a lot of people use it? Yes, they do. 
Are those companies saying anything about it? No, they're keeping it a bit of a secret because it's giving them a massive competitive advantage. Okay, so they're two very, very small and very, very simple terminologies that are cheap enough that you could experiment with. Very good, thank you. Um, thank you for your insight. So what I can hear from you is, if you do not really like to, to use the problem word, you can use different word in from, from recommendation from, uh, from, from, from Rich. Uh, be better me, be better me, or nothing is perfect, then there is always something better. To force yourself to take action, don't wait. You need to force yourself to take action and do experiment. And there are a couple of recommendations from him for very simple application of technology. If you are HR people, you can come into application tracking or selection tool or people size. This is also the first time I hear uh, this term. It's a very nice term. Uh, thank you. So normally we use assessment or test, but now people size. Okay. So... Um, before I come to Chan for her opinion on HESA solution, I want to also ask one more question to all three gentlemen here to know your view on what are the current challenges in adopting technology in Vietnam? Uh, so, um, from the um, angle of... Um, technology solution application consulting company. We have seen that um, in many cases, um, the customers, the enterprises, uh, had a plan to um, adopt or you know, to invest in technology, but uh, there was a misalignment. Uh, there wasn't a clear um, direction of uh, how uh, they would want the technology that they are going to buy to um, um, uh, respond or to address the problems, the business problems um, that they currently have in the organization. Um, meaning to say, um, before adopting any technology solution, um, there may be a need to revisit the business strategy and from there, you know clearly the directions, the priorities for the business. And then, particularly if we are talking about HR's um, area, uh, business strategy, um, people strategy, uh, HR strategy, and then the technology for HR. Yeah, thank you, and thank very good. So, if you are not very clear on why do you want to use technology, what problem do you want to solve by using technology, you need to wait for a while. You need to do more analysis and uh, get in further inside before you make a decision. Otherwise, you will end up with not really maximizing the technology in hand. So, is there any other opinion from... Yeah, yes. I'll, just, I'll just share some generic observations. Right? I, I think uh, some of those challenges uh, would include uh, fear of the unknown, fear of change, you know, and... And you, you always come up with many other reasons why I shouldn't adopt that. And it's, it's also easy to find objections anyway, right? And I think the other thing that uh, we also notice is that um, um, sometimes it's not very clear to all the stakeholders what the benefits are from adopting technology. And this, you know, comes from a combination of maybe, um, you know, not the communication of you know, the objectives and the benefits very clearly, both on the vendor side and also from the, 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 uh, the, the in-house, uh, you know, considerations. Um, so, from our own experience as well, for grab for work as the solution, um, we find that uh, when companies uh, can see clearly what the benefits are, um, then the adoption becomes a lot easier. So uh, the case in point is that Grab, I mentioned that Grab is a new company. We only started here, you know, maybe no more than three, four years ago. Uh, but Grab for Work is even newer. We only launched ourselves about a year ago. And uh, we, we were able to, in fact, uh, reach out to a lot of uh, uh, customers here. 
uh, and within the last 12 months, you know, we've already have uh, more than 1,200 customers uh, in Vietnam. So I think, I think we, we find that, uh, you know, it's really a combination of making uh, the solution easy enough to understand and easy enough for customers to see the benefits of uh, applying that. Thank you, Jisun. Okay, a few, a few observations. Um, I totally agree with your point on, on um, sort of trying to show the value, trying to show the ROI on, on the technology initiative. I'm very guilty of that. I'm a bean counter. So when anybody in my organization comes to me, I say, well, what's the ROI? Um, traditionally, I, I'd say the HR folks, HR teams, aren't the best people to be able to show what the ROI is because it's very fuzzy, isn't it? This is to do with people. It's, it's, it's very complicated. It's not easy. And so business leaders need to maybe relax a bit or chill out a bit, cut some slack <laughs> to H HR. Uh, and it's, it's, it's hard for HR to come up with, this is the ROI that we will deliver if we automate this. Know. You know, um, again, going back to the previous speaker, business leaders, we need to take action. We need to experiment. You know, let HR experiment. It's usually the the department that's given the smallest budget. <laughs> you know, why are, really? Why aren't some uh, um, uh, HR departments using ATS systems? Because it costs money. You know. What's their budget? Well, the only budget they get is people and, and some, some money to, so they can post adverts on, on a job board. And that's sort of it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a bit unfair. Um, so allow them to experiment. Thank you, Rich. So fear factor from Jisun. Fear factor is the factor really stopping you to take action. Understand the benefit of what technology can bring you. That's also important for you to take action. And uh, Rich also challenged us as a HR leader whether we understand the ROI, return of investment. So if we don't know what is the ROI, we have to make sure that we get it to be known. We need to get it to be known. We need to understand what the ROI for organization before you really bring in the technology. Because at the end of the day, there is a cost associated with whatever we are investing in. And if you bring your proposal to your manager, he will ask you, what is the benefit? What is the ROI? And if you are unable to answer that question, I'm sorry, you cannot get it, right? So now let's come to Jan. Um, um, so um, let's have a chat with her to understand how uh, how Russian to incorporate technology into the HESHA solution. Um, before I pass my question to Chang, I would also want to remind the forum that I will open the forum for questions as well. So please make sure that you have your question in mind and then if you want, you can note down your question. So hi Chang, um, how long has uh, Willis uh, Tower Washington been operating in Vietnam? Well, um, that would be a very complicated story <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, now we have, uh, because Willis uh, merged with Tao Watson, so uh, we are becoming Willis Tao Watson. And Cross Savoir, Willis has been in this market for more than 23 years already. So, uh, but be be before, like, uh, you, you're going to ask me about the questions. Yeah. So, um, my question to you is, in your opinion, how has technology helped uh, enhancing your HESA solution? Well, okay. Yeah, so before I answer my questions, so um, I just want to ask the audience that uh, have anyone here had a problem with the, uh, the staff turnover rate of millennials? So, uh, well, so it's just a, a question because um, I would like to, uh, because uh, Rick already mentioned about uh, uh, how, to, uh, how to hire the right people already. So uh, my, my answers related to the HR solutions would be that what we should provide to keep the people 
Benson here that because we saw a lot of uh, like slides and then and, and the changes of the future of workforce we see that uh, the shift of our workforce there is more and more millennials coming in your organizations and it seems that they make like the baby boomers and it's kind of crazy to keep them engaged um, and uh, there is a variety of solutions that uh, Willis Towson can provide in terms of, uh, uh, of recruitment and all kind of things. But what I would like to address is that, uh, just to show some, some uh, example about the solution that we could hope to keep the right people, is that uh, we provide what the employees want. And uh, we call that uh, the flexible benefits. So you would see that because of the uh, new workforce changes, and there is uh, many and many like young millennial managers. And uh, basically, in the past, we usually provide our benefits package based on their career level. It means that if you're like executive, if you're like managers, then your benefits package will be increased. But then, because of the young managers, they actually don't want a big package insurance, right? And they actually don't want a very large like a, a life insurance or something like that. So our platform could help the employee, if, and, and also if the, the employee, they, are, they also enjoy uh, insurance from their partner or their husband or their spouse or something like that. So they could choose, they, they could choose not to buy the insurance and they could save that money uh, to their flexible spending accounts and bu and buy gym membership and to buy uh, spa time or something like that. And uh, also, because of the millennials, we seems to uh, they, we, we, there is a popular say in uh, YOLO, you only live once. So travel and experience is something that's very important to them. So uh, for example, we the platform could allow uh, the employee buy more leave. So for example, in my case, so I have about like 18 leaves annual leave per year. And like every year I buy more extra, more three days just to travel. And, and that is uh, very like uh, the employees really enjoy that because uh, some of the like uh, senior employees in our company, they never use all of their leave. So they can sell that as well. And they can sell that and then they can choose a more like a comprehensive insurance package. And, and this platform could help um, the employees engage more to their company. And just to talking about the return on the investment, uh, for some cases that we implement the platform for our clients, uh, we saw that the engagement um, rate, the, the engagement grade has significantly improved. And actually, when we talk about the cost that you have to invest in the benefits in, so, in terms of insurance and all other kind of money that you invest in the benefits, the total benefits uh, budget actually decreased about 15 to 20%. So, so that is something that I could share, like very specific one of the solution that provided by Willis Tao Watson. Wow. It sounds like we can try out our annual leave, we can buy and we can sell. And HR can be a, a business leader to having a, tra a trading platform for people to sell and buy things. It sounds very inspiring to me. Uh, flexible benefit is also a new term recently in Vietnam from some of big companies in town. So if you are also wondering what should be your uh, solution for technology, you should also think in about a flexible uh, benefits. That one of the advice from John. So uh, thank you, John, for your sharing. Um, I have a few more questions to our uh, uh, guests today before I come back to the forum for your question. So uh, any one of you can help with the, uh, to share with us further on uh, with the current technology trend, how do you think he could impact HESA as a function? I think with anything in technology, 
um, it's, it's all part of this digital transformation. And the, the message on Industry 4 and digital transformation is either transform and be the disruptor or be disrupted by someone else. Uh, again, going back to the previous speaker, uh, the RPA, the bots, um, I was just thinking on, on how many processes that, that that can already replace in, in an HR uh, department. Um, and that's from a half an hour quick presentation. Um, I'm, I'm sure all of you, if, if you had actually think about it and spend some time, you can think of an awful lot more in your own organizations. So again, I would urge you to just think about your own organizations and how you can begin to transform it. Because if you're not gonna do it, I'm sure there are gonna be lots of providers out there who are gonna come up with some innovative and disruptive solution that, that is gonna disrupt you. I think when you think about technology, think about disruption, I think the, the normal initial human reaction is fear and rejection and trying to be in a denial mode. Uh, but I actually think that um, you know, digital technology, uh, digital uh, disruption technology is really exciting for HR. You know, we all hear so much about uh, robotics, automation, taking away jobs, you know, half the jobs that we know of today in 10 years' time, 15 years' time are going to vaporize. They're not going to be here. But it doesn't mean that, you know, there are 50% less jobs, right? Uh, the jobs just evolve into uh, different roles. And I suspect because disruption brings about change in people's role, HR, I believe, sits right in the middle of facilitating how to navigate organizations into the future. Perhaps all the menial, low-level HR jobs will go away, uh, but, but HR as an organization, I believe, will play an increasingly important role in the next 10, 15 years. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, um, I, I'm not uh, trying to be, be negative. It's a massive opportunity for HR. We can, get we can get rid of that stigma that HR is a cost center. You know, we can forget about HR as a business partner and do a bit of a leapfrog and see how HR can actually transform the organization. Organizations, or mo all of our organizations, are all about people, okay? So as people, people in HR, you know, we can really, really transform and drive the organization. We can get rid of all of those boring administrative things and find some smart bot to take that over. And we can start applying ourselves to really elevating what people in the organization can do. So as Chi Soon said is, we should be really, really excited about this and we should be grabbing, grab, <laughs> this opportunity. I just like to add a couple more points, uh, um, supporting uh, Rick and Jisun. So uh, we have been um, talking about key uh, areas of HR function, like um, uh, talent strategies, learning and development, uh, and also organizational development, and uh, all those key areas can be supported by um, technology very significantly, and we have seen in. Um, uh, some organizations, even the uh, the organizational effectiveness uh, initiatives um, have been led by um, HR function. So with the technology uh, enablement, uh, HR can, um, like Rick has mentioned, that uh, can um, play a leading role in transforming the um, companies, the organizations. Wow, thank you. So the bad news is from Antang is almost all HR activity, processes, there is technology available in the market to replay those human interaction. But the good news is, if we know how to go one step ahead, if we want to be the person to dis disrupt, not be disrupted, 
then you will know how to use technology to move forward. And you will be the one to transform the whole organization into future. You see, this is a very important role. So if you still wonder who should be the transformation in the company into future, it's your role today. It's a HR leader role. You have to make sure that you move on the transitional administration work to someone else, to technology, and make you become a more business strategic partner. And you move your organization into future. Wow. So then I believe that the role of HR function will be very different. In future, even today, it's already a little bit different or very different in certain company. Then I would also ask another question on how the technology will impact HR as a person. I would like to take that uh, uh, to, to answer that um, because uh, when we have experience working with a lot of Asia and uh, as the first of the slide that shared by uh, Ji Hung uh, about the, the current situation in Vietnam because we, we have like uh, a lot of operational and transactional and a lot of Asia like in Vietnam and also in global uh, in other countries we would like to step in to be a really business partner. And so what is the HR, what is the technology could impact HR as a person? So my question is very simple. It would allow HR a lot of time to think, to be a full-fledged strategy HR. So not just focus on like transactional and operational or for other things. We, technology could handle all of that on Calabas activity for you. So, so I, I believe that with technology, you know, I, the impact to the individual or the organization is to, if you think about HR being in a back room, administrative, supportive role, it, technology will be an opportunity for the HR to migrate yourself on the organization more and more to a, a very central strategic role to transform and steer the business. Wow, thank you. Thank you for your insight. And like Chang just mentioning, it will allow us, as a leader, with more time to think. And now it's up to you to figure it out on what are you going to think about? Because you seem will have more time now, 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 and into future. And if you don't use that time meaningfully, and then your job will be in a risk situation. So now I open the forum for all the audience to ask our speaker, uh, our guest question. Hello. So sorry, I have a question again. Uh, regarding this, um, I have uh, two uh, area or uh, your opinion to uh, may I ask question uh, first Mr. Tang regarding IT company um, you mentioned that uh, HR when you uh, your company deploy the project to HR company HR team uh, you get the unclear your team get the unclear uh, instruction from HR and I have uh, my experience that uh, sometimes for IT company a project team come to uh, enterprise company. Uh, actually, they don't have, uh, they don't fully understand HR process. And this is a big gap. They, all, they perfect about the uh, IT solution, but they don't understand the uh, IT, uh, HR process. And sometimes they provide wrong solution. And it takes time for uh, enterprise to try to achieve a target now. This is a big gap. And I have um, strong, uh, I'm sorry, I um, want to, uh, can ask you that uh, should have the more training about the um, HR process for your IT project team. This is the help to, to, to close this gap. And okay. Uh, the second thing regarding the, um, uh, we discuss more about the advantage of the HR technology applied to uh, HR daily operation process. 
I think this is a big uh, um, you recognize this, but uh, you ask us to answer that uh, how ROI return of investment. We know that exactly uh, HR should deal with the uh, number, many number, 80% time with the with number, support your business to contribute the solution. And um, we have problem that when we propose the budget to leadership team to improve the infrastructure, support HR operation, uh, absolutely difficult to get approval from them, from leadership team. And now, uh, do you have, uh, can instruct us how we can get uh, uh, support from leadership team to uh, operate the HR technology? And the best way, and can you predict that? How, what, um, how many years in the Vietnam can uh, get the uh, uh, advances from HR new technology? This is my question, yeah. So thank you for your question. So I suppose that the first question is uh, for me, right? And second, maybe for Rick. Okay, so I'm trying to, to, to address uh, for your first uh, question first. Uh, okay, so I, I, I uh, actually we've been um, in this uh, consulting business for um, uh, quite some time already. So I understand what, what you have been um, concerning about. And um, actually, uh, in terms of the um, HIS um, consulting implementation, we don't position ourselves as only the IT partner, but at the same time, we want to bring in the um, business best, best practices. And we believe that uh, before applying, uh, or, you know, talking about any IT process, system process, we need to revisit the business process very carefully. And uh, we need to make sure that uh, we are trying to address the business problem. So that's why I mentioned that we need to have a clear strategy from the business um, strategy first, strategy to uh, people, people strategy, the capabilities of people that you want to have in the organization, the HR strategy, the operating model uh, of the HR function, and then we talk about the uh, HRIS uh, solution architecture. So um, um, in, in our practice, we usually uh, provide the uh, best practice um, consulting uh, so that uh, we can um, have the um, companies, the enterprises to uh, quicker get into alignment, um, not uh, simply replicating your current practice that you may be doing manually outside of the system, any system currently, uh, to put those into um, the system because doing that we may be, let's say, following the, the bad practices, but instead we need to, to think about the, the, the best practices. And um, before any IT system deployment, we always advise the customer to revisit themselves in terms of um, their organizational um, structure, their um, jobs, um, architecture, competencies that they have in the organization, any processes that in place, the, their strategies for talent management, a lot about culture and engagement. And um, only um, having um, had a full picture of uh, those areas, we would uh, be able to discuss about the technology uh, adoption. So um, uh, for us, we are not so keen to, let's say, jump into a discussion about the IT solution implementation. I'm not mentioning any solution that we are uh, providing in the market um, currently, but we, we are more keen on first to talk about the HR function. Uh, and uh, I, I would like to talk a little bit about this, your second question, how to, to position um, the um, technology adoption to higher management to get approval for the project and things like that, right? So, uh, so before a answering that question or you know, giving any recommendation, I would ask a question. Uh, about the position of HR in your current organization. What does your HR director or, you know, do you have um, the CHRO? Uh, what does the HR director do in your organization? Do, do they participate in the business meeting at the highest level? Do they participate in resolving uh, the organizational effectiveness uh, questions? And after that, after having a clear understanding of your current HR organization, HR practice, we would be able to um, align on the 
further direction and the strategy for the technology adoption or any HIS implementation. Thank you. I, uh, Okay, uh, talking about the second question, um, where, which was really in response to a comment I made before that potentially the HR can't present the ROI um, to the leadership team. So on the assumption that they can, and the leadership team is still turning around and saying no, <laughs> it's sort of fundamentally still trying to get back to why are they saying no. Um, is it on a relative scale? They're saying no because the ROI for this HR project is not enough relative to the ROI of other projects that they are also considering. <clears throat> is it something more, <clears throat> might be a bit more irrational, that even though you've got a great ROI, they just don't like the fact that it's going to cost so much? <laughs> um, is it going to be the fact that the folk on the leadership team aren't a big fan of HR in the first place and maybe couldn't care less what the ROI is. You're not going to have it. Um, it's, it is, you know, to, to, to gain the, um, the buy-in of the leadership team for this initiative is no different from any other initiatives. Okay. Um, we need to, over time, convince them of its, of its importance. And, and it's a lot harder in a lot of organizations because my observation is in a, an awful lot of um, organizations, HR really is that back office cost center that doesn't actually have a seat at the management table in the first place. So even when they come up with stuff, it's, other people around the table have got more important things in their mind. They have their own agendas. So what's in it for them? So it's a big HR task to get our place at that table in the first place. But until we're at that table, it's gonna be even harder to convince people at that table to adopt our initiative. I don't have any silver bullets here. I don't have any, I can't wave a magic wand and go and do this and you've solved the problem. Nobody ever said it was easy. We're just saying that we have to take action. We have to do something now. We have to try. We have to convince the leadership that they've got to allow us to experiment. It goes back to that, that joke, doesn't it? <clears throat> Where you go, to the, uh, you go to the boss and say, hey, you know, should we invest all this money training this person? Because that's a really expensive training course. You know, and they're saying, well, what's the ROI? You know, but the alternative is, is if we don't train him, you know, we have a bit of a dummy, don't we? <laughs> Thank you, Antang and Rich. Very interesting question from, from you on challenge back the uh, solution provider on what kind of knowledge are you bringing whenever you come to my organization to advise us or helping us with solution. So a clear answer from Antang was first, they are not IT, tech not, tech IT person only, they are consultant. And the way they consult is to translate your uh, strategy into action via technology. So you have to make sure that you very clear on what's your strategy, what objective, what do you want first, and then they will help you to translate it into technology. And very interesting answering from, uh, from Rich as well on the ROI assuming you know how to present the proposal to your boss. And if your boss say no, then first you need to look in, into your assumption. Is it wrong assumption? Is it right analysis and right assumption? And you need to also take a look into the company priority, right? Maybe it's not their focus and your role in, in, in HR function. So far, did you really play a proactive role as a strategic partner to really pushing forward for certain initiatives or not. So those are areas you need to look in, into. Um, and convincing over time. It's not one time convince. You can win the deal. If you used to be a salesperson, remember, you out there in the market, you might need to sell 100 times and then you get one consumer. 
and HR leader, you should not take an easy job to, say, to come to your leader and sell only one time and you should expect your GM say yes to you. I would encourage you to t come to your GM at least 10 times. To me, 10 times is still very little. Sometimes I have to come 100 times. Trust me. So you sometimes have to be a salesperson as well to make sure that you can sell your product to your GM. Okay, so any further questions from the forum? One more. Uh, I would like to have a question for all the panelists. Um, regarding to the approach HR technology, it's no doubt that it's very benefit for um, information and system. And my concern is about the technology to apply for the HR at the Imbler branding. And as you know, that digital marketing is right now is applied very wider, like Facebook and LinkedIn. And may uh, you share one of the company they are already success in using the digital marketing for employee branding? Uh, because at HR, we are quite new with this uh, area. And also, uh, somebody say that it uh, make 100 years to build the brand name, but just one minute to kill it. So it's the first part of my question. And the second, uh, we're talking about the millennial and so many ways to attract the millennial. But I also see the trend that a group of millennial right now look like the indigestion after a lot of activities in social media. And so how you think about that? Thank you. Anyone want to take this question? It's not an easy question. She would like to understand further on is there any available product about employer branding? And with the digital marketing, it seems like millennials, they are overused media, social networking. How do you rebalance your product to make sure that there is a balance in social media and uh, normal uh, branding activity? I think I, I should take it because I, I am a millennial. <laughs> so, uh, so for your first questions uh, related to uh, employer branding, so uh, I actually have like no specific name for you just to recommend about like, some solution that you could leverage on uh, to, to build your employer branding. But I think uh, is that uh, digital marketing and is something that uh, it changed the way that HR communicate to employees, and I think uh, it depends on uh, on 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 each company if they have the budget for their own communication platform or not, or like workplace or some other uh, startup solutions. Uh, but uh, I think uh, for some companies that I know, they, they actually uh, leverage on uh, a lot of uh, like uh, public uh, social media just to communicate to their employees. And that is how the managers try to engage their team member. So for example, they create a group on Facebook uh, just to communicate and, and, and keep contacted all the time to with them uh, with the team members that is one of the way and uh, and for the others like uh, second questions related to uh, uh, what would you mean by like over a lot of activities related to social media I think that is we need to manage our expectation then because uh, social media is is now how we how the how the new new how the new um, generation they, they live on that and 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 actually so so for me so in the past my challenge when I was on stage is uh, trying to find the ideas that uh, really like engage the audience but actually uh, for for some reason talks that I, uh, I I did one of the challenges is how to keep you away from your phone. So something like that. I think um, the way that we uh, we need to manage our expectation, and in a way that uh, so some of the new things that you have to, uh, if you want to keep your employee really focused on your works, 
then uh, one of the things that you could think is that uh, the objective, uh, you, you will manage them by objectives rather than a big project. That we call like OKR or something like that, just to, uh, to divide it into tags and keep the time span really short. So for example, so in the past you may uh, have to like set the goals of like uh, an employee have to stay with your company like five years. Now you have to manage that like two years or something like that. I think we have to deal with the new fact. And uh, there is not actually enough evidence to say that really employees are really spend a lot of time on, on, on the social media or something like that. That is my point of view. Well, I think <clears throat> it, there was a time not too long ago that many companies uh, were trying to find ways to regulate against use of social media. Uh, but I think it's hard to see social media in this way anymore, right? I mean, social media, it is really a form um, of communication and interaction that is very pervasive now, not just for the young, but throughout the whole population, right? Throughout society. And so social media is not anti-work, right? It is just, uh, it's just a way of interaction. So, um, uh, in fact, I think um, if, you, if you look at it this way, then we shouldn't think about social media as something that we need to fight against. But in fact, you've got to find ways to embrace social media and see how you can um, you know, use the same consumer behaviour in a work behaviour. And the other thing that's at, at play as well, it, you know, it wasn't, again, it wasn't too long ago when the delineation between work and your personal life is clear enough, right? You know, because everything is tied to a physical location. Uh, you know, the moment you leave the office and then you're into a different space. But with technology, with the internet, with mobile adoption, that line is very grey. It's good or bad, I think it depends on how you manage, right? But you could be working when you are at leisure, or you could be um, enjoying leisure activities while at work, right? So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, interplay and uh, you know, mixing the things up. So I think the clever organisation is one uh, who will not try to regulate against social media, but to embrace it to see how you could use that same mode of interaction uh, to promote collaboration um, yeah, and teamwork within the company. It's a really great question that you were asking there. Employer branding, okay? This should really be the domain of HR, right? But what is employer branding? What are we trying to do? We're just trying to position the organization and we're trying to control how people perceive it. We want, to, we want our organizations to be perceived as attractive, a good place to work, a professional place to work, one of the best places to work, somewhere where I, can, I may be appreciated or whatever. There are many, many things that we want to create through employer branding. Now, when it comes to technology, the opportunity we have is we now have many more new channels to communicate this employer branding message that we never had before. In the past, we can stick an ad in the in the media, in the newspaper, or whatever, or we'd go to an event and have a booth and meet people face to face. That hasn't changed, that's still here. But now we have all these new channels. We can do tons of stuff across our website. We could build an app, okay? We can use social media, and it's not, Facebook is only one social media channel, all right? If we use the, uh, one of the other things that is the growing trend on, on, um, on internet and digital, and you have an expert sitting in the room here, there, there he is, Kerry Kennedy, on video, the use of video. You know, use of video for employer branding is fantastic. He taught me that. So go speak to him. So, uh, you know, if you want to, to show, you know, millennials want to know what it's like to work in your organization. They don't want to read a bit of text. They want to see some of your employees on video 
saying what a great place it is and how they've experienced it. That's how you can embrace technology today. So maybe, yeah, this is one very small area where we in HR can right now take some action and start experimenting to see if we can improve our employer branding. And maybe that will help earn us a place at the senior management table. Thank you. So it seems like employer branding is all about visibility and what kind of message do you want to send out there in the marketplace. So then you might need to consider on what kind of tool do you want to use to communicate that message and make sure that you are visible outside there. So as a HR leader, it's also your important part in future on how to communicate your employer branding message to the market. Any final question? Uh, interesting discussion, so a very simple question. Um, one of the market research companies recently did a survey among millennials in Vietnam across uh, about 40 different industries. They showed that within the HR industry, the millennials who quit uh, or the engagement or loyalty is no different in HR industry than in almost any other industry. So. The simple question is, why should we listen to you? When you talk about best practices, if you cannot have best practices in your own organizations, how can we believe you? And I, I don't want it to sound rude, but if all industries are losing 30% of millennials every year, and you're losing 30 to 40%, okay, you're not even having, showing the best practices within your own companies about how to engage those people and how to make meaningful long-term employee engagement. So I know it's a very difficult question and I think it goes beyond technology because companies like IBM, Samsung, tech companies are losing millennials at the same rates. So is technology even something that should be considered? Or is it more like flexibility in workplace, being able to work from home, being able to have other types of benefits and so on like that? If millennials are the future workforce, then how do you actually engage them on a long-term basis? Thank you. Allow me to answer your question first, because uh, I, I was from the HR industries as well. But just to clarify, because I participate with the, with the local survey provider to do that, uh, so I know very well the result. But uh, just to clarify, even though like uh, with, with our company, Willis Tower Watson, we actually don't have that turnover rate with millennials and what we what I could be proud of the company is that because Willis Towson is one of the a few companies that allow flexible working and flexible benefits that we can choose where to work and uh, what time that we should to work for so for me like I usually work at seven and I leave at four for my gym time and uh, and I could buy and sell leave. And one of the thing with the, just to uh, just to add that why millennial, even though that they are quite happy with the company, but they are ready to leave, is that because they want new experience? So the new things is always attract them really much. That that is why they are not actually loyal to, to, to any company. So one of the things is that we need to create more new things, new projects just to engage them. And I think that uh, as an HR company, and uh, Willis Towson has done it very well, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, I, I'm, I'm like, I know very well that we, we do not participate in the, in the survey, so I could be proud that we don't have that problem with millennials in our company. But the thing is, uh, if, with millennials, is, uh, they are more like individualized. And uh, it means that even though that we are that the same millennial, we, we think very different. Because we, 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 form from, we came from very different background of the family and culture and kind of things. So uh, 
that is, I, I would like to address the flexibility in terms of anything that you provide in your company just to keep them. That, that is my point. Good question, Kerry. Um, why should anybody here listen to any of us? We don't have to. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a choice. Um, I'm not here to say that we have the silver bullet or we can share as our experiences. Um, we are as good and as bad as everyone else. There are certain areas, you know, when I speak in my own organization, certain areas where we think we've got it more right and other areas where yeah, we're still messing up pretty badly. Um, so we have areas of high turnover and areas of long turnover, uh, uh, low turnover. But we know we've got it right in some places and we're still trying to work out why is it right and why is it so wrong. Now, going back to the technology question, is technology the answer? Not necessarily. Technology is just a tool. The only problem is it's a tool and the tool is in the hands of a person. <laughs> and um, as people, we still mess things up. We still screw things up. Um, you know, you can have the best hiring tools in the world and automate everything and think you're going to be hiring the right person, but the ultimate decision is made by that hiring manager. Okay? And they don't get it right all the time. Okay? They may choose to ignore what the tools are telling them, or they may choose to follow what the tools are telling them. But... Again, I go back to the previous speaker. Um, when we're looking at automation, we can't automate everything. And the very, very higher cognitive skills requires the human intervention. So I guess that's the issue. We're people, we're not perfect, we're gonna get it wrong. <laughs> so a couple more uh, ideas. Uh same as Rick, I don't have a perfect answer to your question. Actually, that's a problem that uh, myself and my organization we have been dealing with as well. But um, uh, to be fair, I think that um, many factors impact um, the uh, loyalty, you know, engagement of uh, the employees, especially the young people, and as shared by Chang, maybe just uh, some new things may attract them than any other strategy that you may have been putting in a particular person for a long time uh, for him or her to, to make a decision to leave. And, uh, but uh, uh, that's um, the, the nature of what we have, dealing with, uh, where we have been dealing with in terms of the people management. That's the trend. And um, uh, it's up to us to do something, trying to improve the situation to make uh, the environment better and even uh, for, for our organization, we try to have a balanced view of um, the mixture of the workforce. I, I answer yes to the question from, uh, sorry, the gentleman from Deloitte regarding whether we treat the contractors the same level or maybe similar level to the permanent employees. We do because we value the contributions from different types of the workforce and we think that that's the trend and particularly in, in, in our industry, we cannot avoid that situation. And we try to provide the, um, if not equal, so similar um, conditions to different types of um, the consultants that we have been working with. Um, one way is to trying to um, retain the people, the talent that we have been having in the organization. The other way around is to attract the new talent to be on board, to be full time. So just one simple example, onboarding program. Usually we think onboarding starts on the first day of the employee at work, right? But actually we can start onboarding much earlier after, right after the time the offer is accepted by the candidate. We would engage them into some of the initiatives. So to keep them uh, throughout the, the period of time until he or she will be on board. Because you may know that uh, the ratio of, you know, uh, accepted offer and then do not show, show up at work is in increasing. So 
it's it's not about the technology alone or you know the business strategy alone or you know something that can answer or, you know address and fix that problem i think that we 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 have to live with that and we deal with that and we move forward uh, using the um, the tools the strategies the um, business and the technology that we have and continuously improve the situation, make our organizations better. And I, I think that we, we, have been, we, we have been developing in such a direction. Yeah, thank you, Rich and Thang, and thank you for your thoughtful question. So at the end of the day, technology is only a tool, and a tool should be used by someone. It should be used by someone. And if you have a better tool in hand, you should use it resourceful. Make sure that it brings the most benefit to you. So I would like to end the session now and thank you for your uh, questions. Thank you all the guests for your uh, opinion. <laughs>